Hi, everyone. Last time I was on, we talked about Samuel and how important it was as a young person to follow Jesus. And we've heard that Samuel was very young when he started and made a choice to follow God. But today we're going to tell you about a little girl. She couldn't have been more than five or ten years old. It doesn't tell her how tell us how old she was and it doesn't even really say her name but it does say that she was a maiden a little maiden and she was a servant and she actually was a servant to Naaman's wife in other words she helped her she took care of her she waited on her she might have fed her she might have helped her get dressed I don't know all of the things that she did but one thing I do know that the Bible says is that she had compassion and she had enough love and compassion in her life and she had enough God in her heart that she thought of Naaman. Now Naaman was the captain of all the armies of Syria. He held the highest rank in the land except for the king. He was a great, great soldier. And he was very, very brave. But there was something that was wrong with Naaman. And he had a disease. And the Bible called it leprosy. Now, I don't need to go into the disease. Because all I can tell you, it was very uncomfortable, very painful. And it looked horrible. And nobody would go around you when you had it. And he had it. Well, the compassion of this little girl and the love that she had for God, she knew that God couldn't do something. Now, she didn't just sit back and say, hmm, fine, he took me from my home, he took me from my parents' house, and I'm not going to help him at all. Even though I know it could be helped, I'm not going to. No, she didn't. She had enough love in her heart, and she had enough compassion that she looked and she told Naaman's wife right there in the Bible. She said, I know that the man of God could say the words for Naaman to be healed. Now, she might not have had to say anything, but she made the choice to stand. And because of that, if you read, and that chapter is in 2 Kings chapter 5 verses 1 through 15 it goes through the whole thing about what N N uh, Naaman did sorry I keep wanting to call him Nathan but it's not it's Naaman <laughs> but I'm talking about a little girl see God doesn't look at your size he doesn't look at your age he doesn't look at how important you are Here's a little girl. She was a servant. She wasn't important. She was five or six years old when she was taken from her home and put in this house and made to serve this Naaman's wife. But she had enough love in her heart. Now I have to believe that her mama and daddy did everything they could to put God's love in her heart. Just like you have a mom and dad, you have a great pastor, you have a youth pastor, you have Sunday school teachers, and you have so many people. Now, I know we haven't been in church a lot, but you know what? Just listening to the word, just hearing our voices, listening to your pastor speak on Sunday mornings, and all of the ministers on Sunday night and Wednesday night, and then pastor on Tuesday nights, and the um, kids' videos, that's all about God. That's us pointing you to Christ. Pointing you to continue your walk with God. This little girl found herself away from her mom and dad. But she had the love of God inside of her. And she didn't sit on it. She didn't become angry. She didn't say, I'm not helping Naaman. He can, because people died from leprosy. She didn't think that. All she wanted to think about was the love of God that she had inside of her. That God would do something miraculous.
And it goes on to say, if you read the story, and maybe mom and dad could sit down and read that story to you, one of them. But what happened was, is, is that Naaman was sent by the king to the to um, the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said, I can't help her. But the man of God, Elisha, could. And he, when he found out, he goes, send me Nathan and I, Nathaniel. <laughs> Not Nathaniel. Naaman again. <laughs> send him back. Send him over to me. And he did. And it's the story is about this little girl. But it goes on to say that Naaman became healed from leprosy. Not just because of the man of God. Not just because of God, but because of a, a courageous little girl who spoke up, who doesn't even have a name in the Bible. But God saw fit to put this story in for you to know that I don't care how old you are, God will use you if you so let him. Isn't that beautiful? Now we're learning about young people of the Bible, but you're a young person. Maybe your name isn't in the Bible, but you're a young person in God's house. And God said, I will use any vessel that is willing. That's right. That is willing. So be courageous. Love people with all your heart. See, that's what this little girl's parents taught her. That no matter where you are, no matter where you go, love people. And God will see you through. And God will be with you. So God bless you. You go have a great day. Have a wonderful time. And it doesn't matter if you're in school or if you're at home or wherever you could be visiting Grandma and Grandpa. I don't know where you are. But know that you be cur courageous. You be that young person of God to bring a kind word, a hug, and just a loving heart to someone else. I love you all. We'll see you soon. I'm not sure who we're going to talk about next, but I'm going to keep it as a surprise. Okay, bye. All right, so we, um, we kind of like trivia do even though sometimes we're not good we're at it it's still terrible fun. at it sometimes but it is still fun and we get to learn more things so today we have a special category yes we are going to do bible bible Ooh. trivia all right so abby is going to ask me some questions now this is bible trivia for kids but we've learned that doesn't mean anything nope Okay. All right. Oh wow, these are long questions. Okay. Um, number one, when Samuel picked David as king, God reminded us that while people look at the outward appearance, what does God look at? God looks at the inward appearance. God looks at the heart. Very good. And can you give me scripture references? <laughs> it's in Samuel. Yes. <laughs> First Samuel. First Samuel. <laughs> All right, what is the last book of the Old Testament? Is it 2 Samuel? Malachi. You have to give me a chance to give answers. Because what if our friends want to try to answer it? All right, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Is it 2 Samuel? Where's the rewind? 2 Samuel, Matthew, Zephaniah, or Malachi? Malachi. Very good. <laughs> All right, number three. How many times did God call out to young Samuel in the oh. night as he was lying down in the house of the Lord? All right, it's multiple choice. Okay. Was it four times, three times, one time, or 20 times? I feel like it was three times. It was actually four times. What instrument did David play? You know how like you know things, but then you're like, the harp? Yes. Okay. And bonus question, uh, who did he play it for? The sheep and for Saul? Yes. 
very good. And probably for other people too. I mean, yeah. But the Bible tells us that he played. Kind of like full blown concerts. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> All right. Finish this verse from First Thessalonians. Okay. Is it multiple choice? It is multiple choice. Okay. Pray without what? Pray without doubting, pray without crying, pray without complaining, or pray without ceasing. It's ceasing, but I have to say, without doubting, without complaining are good ways to pray too. <laughs> they are. And what does ceasing mean? Because that's kind of a big word. It means stopping. That's pray right. without stopping. So it doesn't mean that you walk around all day, every day, just praying nonstop, mm -hmm. but it means that in everything that you do, you're keeping God at the center of it. You're always acknowledging God. You can talk to God regularly. Yeah, and God can talk to, to you anytime. Yep. Yes. Very good. All right, Lauren, number seven. Yep. After Noah got off the boat, what sign did God give to show his promise to never flood the world again? All right, this is multiple choice. Was it a dove, an olive branch, a rainbow, or a fire in a bush? Rainbow. It was a rainbow. God's promise. Very good. All right. You ready for some more? Yeah. All right. How many days and nights did Jesus fast? Multiple choice. Was it 22, 40, 365, or 12? 40. It was 40, very good. Number nine, who was the first person to come upon the injured man in the parable of the Good Samaritan? Was it a tax collector, the innkeeper, the priest, or the judge? I think it was the priest. It was the priest. All right, so the next one. Which New Testament book has Jesus' Sermon on the Mount? Is it Hebrews, John, Revelation, or Matthew? Matthew. Very good. All right, the next one. How many times does the Bible mention the word snow? Is it 24 times, 5 times, never, or 12 times? Well, I know it's not never. What's the first? 24, 5, never, or 12. I'm going to say 12. It's 24 okay. times. All right. All right. It's mentioned several times in Psalms, Proverbs, and Isaiah. Right. All right. One what? more? One more question? Sure. One more. All, All right. right. This Let's... is a double. Double or nothing. <laughs> All right. What did King Solomon ask God to give him? Was it prosperity, a new barn for his grain, fame, or wisdom? Wisdom. Wisdom. You won. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Good job.